What's going on to all my boys fans out there and welcome back to my channel Movie Files. Elliot back again breaking down this third episode of season three of the boys titled Barbary Coast. An episode in which we see Starlight and the boys have to do whatever it takes to take down Homelander. We also get a new member and a returning member in the seven and we get a flashback with payback and we see who's behind the mask of Black Noir. We're discussing that and so much more in today's spoiler breakdown review. Before we get into the discussion make sure you're checking me out on all my other social media accounts. If you're new to the channel and love early movie reviews, TV breakdowns, and live streams, well come and join the community by subscribing and hitting that notification bell. And if you all enjoyed this spoiler review of episode 3 of season 3 of The Boys, well make sure you're liking this review as well as sharing it, but more importantly, sharing your thoughts on this episode, the major reveals, the big moments, Annie having to put a smile on, finding out what did, went down with Soldier Boy and Payback, and just so many, and then Black Noir, I knew he was black behind that mask. We have so much to discuss, and I want to know your thoughts, your theories, your pros and cons. And also, let's talk about these first three episodes, which, by the way, if you all are watching this video, I did break down episodes one and two in a separate video, so you can check those out. But we have a lot to discuss. With all that being said, full spoilers ahead as we open the episode 17 years ago with Little Miss Hero flashback, including Annie. And it's in this scene that we see Little Annie fighting through some pain as she has to perform in front of this audience, cross cut that between her re-watching the speech that Homelander gave in episode two about control and that is a big theme that I really liked in this episode the control and some people have it and other people don't and also connecting that control that Annie has always somewhat been in someone else's control whether it be her mom when she was younger and now Homelander and Vot. So I really like that intercut between those two controlling methods within this episode. But a line I want you all to remember that we're going to tie back at the end of this review. Remember that pain is weakness leaving the body. And also remember keep smiling. We'll tie that back to the end of Annie, which I love that connection there. But getting back into, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first time we've seen Homelander without him being in his suit, let alone being <laughs> naked. I think this is the first time. Let me know if I'm wrong on that. But he's in a really good mood because he gets some good news from Ashley. He learns that after this big speech he gave in episode two, he is now 21 points up in a 44% uptake with white males. And he himself has a record high of 98% which no one has ever had involved including Soldier Boy and including Starlight and uh, yeah things are looking good because now Home Matter realizes they like me. They really like me. As he is coming off of this high, we transition to seeing Billy coming down from his high after going off of the V24. I'm telling y'all right now First off, this opening was fantastic, and I love how thematically, again, control was a big theme, but when we see Billy and him fighting this B-24, and we're seeing at the same time Homelander gaining his confidence, Starlight kind of losing her confidence, this was one of my favorite episodes, not only of the first three so far, which I think is the best one out of three, and I love the other two, this might be one of my favorite episodes of the entire series. Let's get back into why I believe that's the case. Let's get into catching up with M.M. and Huey who are back in the fold with the boys and they already got plans and motions. Number one, Ryan has already been placed elsewhere with Victoria or should I say Nadia, knowing about his location. And speaking of Nadia, um, Huey has a plan in motion which is... Um, I'm gonna have to break my arm to come up with an excuse of why I can't go to work as we see Kamiko breaks his arm. And again, it's so great to see the boys back. And I love that within these first three episodes, which again, I think so far, this based on these three episodes, and I'm gonna talk about this in the review, this is on pace with being the best season so far. And I just love that things are just getting together. We're hitting the ground running and I am loving this narrative. Let me know how you all feel about the boys being back. Let's get back into this breakdown. As we transition into back with the co-captain Starlight, she's getting the rundown on America's Heroes contestants and she already has who she wants to win. And we see as you say, well, we got to run it by Homelander, and she tells her, well, my new contract with Edgar, I don't have to run it by anyone. She's taking control, at least for the time being, as we see Annie pull Supersonic aside to tell him that he will be the winner tonight, but she begs him to decline this offer, and she gives him not all the facts, but she gives him enough information regarding what's going on with Homelander. 
He's off his rocker. He has killed people. He is an evil, despicable person, and she doesn't want him to be a part of this. So we're going to talk about what Super Sonic's decision in a little bit later, but I'm telling y'all right now, I'm mentioning in my review in episode one, Annie in this whole relationship with Super Sonic and obviously how that ties into Huey. I think we're starting to see their relationship grow further and further apart. And there's going to be a three-way situation going on here in regards to a love triangle. So let's go back into what's going on with Frenchie in this episode, whose main girl, Cherry, is in trouble with a character by the name of Nina. She wants to run away with him. He doesn't want to. And we're going to talk about Frenchie a little bit later because he has... This whole Nina Russia thing is very big into the rest of the season. But let's also transition to what we get with A-Train in this episode. As we see that his older brother is outside of the hospital waiting for him. As he learns that his heart condition right now is kind of up in the air. But I love the fact that now A-Train is kind of going back. He, he said he wanted to go to his roots. Well, he's going to the roots of his family. And I really enjoyed this kind of conversation that he has. Number one, I love how three seasons in so far of this, se- of this series... Each season, like season one, we didn't learn as much depth of the characters, like who they are in love with, who their family members are, but season two explored that more, and now we're getting that even more in season three. Um, Seeing A-Train and his family, and we'll talk about, obviously, we got more information with M.M. We're seeing that with Starlight continuing going on. We, We get that with a couple other characters, so I love that they're really developing these characters and getting back into what's going on with A-Train in this episode. He's having this conversation and a much needed conversation about you can't just force your culture. You can't just force being black and now trying to embrace your blackness. And I love that his brother kind of puts him in check. And then he lets him know something that's going on as he shows him this video of Blue Hawk who gets into this situation where this black man was accused of harassing a white woman and he stomped his face into the concrete. And this is a moment and this is a plot that I'm really intrigued to see because we see A-Train say, you know, I'm Michael Jordan in their eyes. I'm not Malcolm X. And I mentioned in my episode two review how they're using A-Train so far and using this kind of narrative. And I think this is kind of important in tying into the stuff that we're going to get with Soldier Boy and M.M. and just kind of the, the racial implications of what these soups can do or what they don't do in certain situations. But I'm really intrigued to see how they're going to use this character to use it as a sense of, He has this platform and he's giving the audience a certain persona, but he's going to have to, he's going to have to see, does he care more about the likes or does he care about having the voiceless now have a voice in the black community? So I'm really intrigued to see what they do with A-Train. Let me know your thoughts on all that. But getting back into what's going on with Soldier Boy, as I mentioned last week, regarding Soldier Boy's connection to MM, as we see the boys have arrived to Ryan's new location and it's in this moment that MM tells the rest the crew on why he returned back to the boys because soldier boy was responsible for the death of his family now i think when him saying death of the family works in a couple different matters one of which we know that his dad died of a heart attack or at least that's what i think he said in season two which you know he didn't like physically directly kill his dad if that's the case that he died of a heart attack but his dad was so driven and was just so obsessed with figuring out how to bring down vat how to show that soldier boy was responsible for the death of going back to this other side of the death, I think that maybe M.M.'s mom died in this situation, Soldier Boy, a brother, a sister, cousin, niece, nephew, someone really close to his family was killed by Soldier Boy. And I think there's a huge implication on when we're going to get into this flashback here with Soldier Boy and Payback. When we learn that they put drugs in the streets, I think the whole, because if you all remember those articles, there were many different articles that he had that said that Soldier Boy took down criminal drug lords, the cartel. So, and again, we know that they put those drugs on the streets to make the heroes be the heroes, right? We know that Vault likes to put things in place so they can have the heroes clean it up. So again, this is very big in implications into racial things and also this social commentary on how the government puts op- obstacles in certain situations to clean it up to make them look like the heroes. So I think there's a lot of a lot of interesting stuff that this episode displayed in such a great way. And we'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'm loving what they're doing so far. But And also I want to note too that I think there's going to be more to the story of Soldier Boy because as we know with Lamplighter last season with whole the Mallory grandsons being murdered he had his perspective is two sides of the story like he thought that was Mallory but then obviously he found out those was the grandkids and it was too little too late so I think right now they're framing it where we're gonna be like oh we hate Soldier Boy but I think there's gonna be his side of the story maybe being 
you always have a choice, right? But I wonder what they're going to explain to us why Soldier Boy did these things. Was he forced? Was there some type of leverage they had on him? I'm really intrigued to learn both sides of the coins. But getting back into what's going on with Kamiko, and this is a scene that I didn't know that I needed, which is a scene between Ryan and Kamiko. And I love how they're talking about how their powers are somewhat of an obstacle or a curse in their lives. And what I like about this scene is someone like Ryan can have someone like Kamiko who feels his way about her powers, like kind of not wanting to have these powers, he can lean on her when his powers are overwhelming to him, right? The whole theme of this episode is about control, right? And him not having control over his power so far. Reflect that with Kamiko's character, right? We know that she has this whole lack of power, lack of control of her childhood, the trauma she went through, her and her brother not having a childhood. And I think she can use Ryan as a way of like, hey, I can do whatever I can to make him, you know, have a somewhat good childhood with having this curse, having these abilities. So I think it's a a really good duality and kind of balance of showing those two characters. I really love that. I hope we get more Kamiko and Ryan. I don't know after what uh, Billy says to him a little bit later, but I really love that scene. Let me know what you all thought about that. But let's go inside where we see Billy confronting Mallory about the Soldier Boy mission. At first, you know, Mallory, she's CIA. She's, you know, not giving out the intel. But we know Billy. He, 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 he gets the information that he needs. And the information we get is so critical. And I really enjoyed this scene. Let's break it all down as we go into Operation Charlie, which involved trafficking drugs, which led into the U.S. getting guns. And it was the whole mantra was do whatever it took to to get this operation rolling which we're going to talk about more here in regards to what actually went down with this operation she also was involved with placing the same drugs in urban different areas again this is the government for you but again tying that back to putting the drugs in urban areas knowing that mm lost his family with being in the crossfires of soldier boy stopping a drug transaction this is all starting to come together Again, this episode was so great, and I'm loving the writing of this show so far. But a big piece here, which is the flashback showing us the payback, which we already know included Soldier Boy, Crimson, Gunpowder, but we also get a glimpse of Swado, Mindstorm, TNT Twins. And I didn't say this in my review in episode two, but I'm like, that looks like noir, but I thought it was like maybe some other version of him. No, that's Black Noir, who's a part of the seven. In a big moment here, ladies and gentlemen, as we see the man behind the mask, and and I'm going to say before we get to the scene, we also get a young Stan Edgar, and again, we go back to Mallory in the 80s, and I personally, let me know how you all felt about this, I felt the actress that was cast to play young Mallory, to me, did a little bit better job of embodying her character, and I can see her being this person 40 years later. The Stan character, the actor, no no offense to him, and, and maybe we'll get maybe more flashback with the younger version of Stan, but that actor didn't really embody, like, I couldn't see him becoming the Stan Edgar that we know today. Just a little personal critique in that moment, but getting back into the big reveal, and the reveal I'm referring to is Noir Without the Mask. He is a black man, which I kind of knew that based on episode two. I mentioned last week, or say season two, when they had the uh, scene when he, episode one, when he was chasing terrorists and his, the, the explosion happened, you saw a piece of his face. And I know some people, some people were speculating, it's the explosion, you know, his face was burnt. I'm like, that's a black man under that mask. And then we even see that when uh, Maeve put the almond joy in his mouth, you see more of his black skin. And it's revealed that he is a black man and he actually had a voice. And we learn why he wears the mask and why he doesn't speak anymore. This was awesome. But now it's just starting to make my head because I don't know, help me in the comments, the relationship between Noir and Edgar, I don't know. Again, you just assume this was Edgar was his boss, but I don't know if there was a deeper friendship, if this was a brothership, if this was a family member, or again, if it was just I'm the boss, you're an employee type of relationship. I'm really excited to explore more of that because they seem to have some type of camaraderie, some type of understanding to each other. They're kind of back and forth that they had there. So I'm really intrigued to learn more about that particular relationship. But again, we know who's under the mask, which even speaks larger to this black man as noir helping with the drugs being put on the urban streets so there's even more social commentary about that particular aspect so again 
Love the reveals, loving the flashback. Let's get back into the discussion here as we're seeing the conversation and as, and I'm loving the flashback, but as I talked about last week, I wonder what some of those side effects are of taking the V24 and unfortunately this whole great story is broken up because we see that Billy has to go to the restroom not to use it because his powers are starting to kind of flare up at this point and he doesn't have again the theme of this episode control let's check back in with what's going on with starlight and homelander who surprise surprise the return of the deep which we obviously know starlight is not a fan of that character we see that she doesn't want this to be a part of the plan and she tells homelander you remember flight 37 yeah you want me to pull that car right now i love this scene because homelander taking back his control as he tells her just go ahead and do it at that point, if you do that, I will have nothing to lose as he details what exactly he would do, which is complete destruction, and he would prefer to be loved, and it's in this moment that he tells them, I can do whatever I want. Again, listen guys, I don't condone any of the terrible stuff Homelander does, but I'm someone that loves a good villain and a good villain is someone that believes in themselves and believes what they're doing is the right thing and the way Homelander is portrayed in the show and now that he has control he has both control over Ravat in a certain extent and he also has his love that he's been thir thirsting for and just craving for with the fans and now having this high 98 percentile rate this is Homelander like we've never seen him before and this is just the tip of the iceberg i think we're just seeing this the small little breadcrumbs of what a unleashed homelander that's liked and loved by the people is going to look like let me know what you all think about that it's not good for the world it's not good for our boys but i'm here for it getting back into it all the deep is back into the seven and they want to celebrate and uh, we see the deep celebrating with his wife and uh yeah this is the boys they have a i guess we can say this is a technically a threesome <laughs> as he's having sex with his wife he's looking at timothy who uh, we'll talk about him a little bit later and they're having a little bit of a like i said a a, a weird three-way with an octopus involved yeah, this is the boys for you. And to check it back in with Billy as his eyes are glowing in the bathroom. Again, he doesn't have control. As Annie tells Huey about the talk she just encountered with Homelander. And we see, um, you know, Huey's looking like Billy at this point. He's like, you got to stay in the game. You got to do whatever it takes. We have to play. We got to get our, roll our sleeves up. We got to play dirty. We got to get our feet in the water. And yeah. Huey is taking control in his own right and taking a little bit of that power that Huey has or to say that he's gotten from uh, Billy and we see Annie she's like all right well, I'm gonna do this but she doesn't know how much longer she's gonna have to kind of save face and kind of do what her mother made her do as a child which is remember to smile and and that's a big theme that we'll talk about as we wrap up the episode but as we see here Ryan uses his senses and he can tell that there's something going on with Billy and I think He's going to be the one that's going to like, well, we'll talk about a scene a little bit later in this episode, but we, I, I think in this moment, Ryan didn't want to out him, but I'm pretty sure Ryan was like, he can sense that there was V24 in his veins, and we'll get into their relationship ending here in a bit. But going back into the flashback, we see that the payback team is not as necessarily advertised as some of them are running, like Swato, who eventually gets killed in the this attack that we see here. Soldier Boy and Gunpowder, they're holding their own as they're under this attack. And then we see Mallory gets knocked out. And now we learn why Noir, or you know, as we know him as Black Noir, he wears the mask because his face was blown half off and then it also affected his voice. So again, we're getting the origin stories of Black Noir, which I love in this point here. But as we see the scene kind of play out, Mallory hears from Crimson that the Russians have killed Homelander, or to say have killed uh, Soldier Boy and have taken him with them. So again, we know that he's not dead, but we're going to go back to Russia in a little bit. But let me know what you all thought of learning how Black Noir has to still wear the mask and how he lost his voice I love that aspect there but we see that Mallory says that she lost 116 men that day and that was her entry point to stop and she wants to vow to destroy and take down Vod as we see Billy is pissed at Mallory because of just learning this news and he tells her that she he will never forgive her she brings up that he has always been and very similar to his father which I hope we get a little bit more explanation of 
how Billy was raised and again learning more about what happened to his younger brother which I assume because again this whole season so far has been peeling the onions behind looking behind the curtain who are these people why do they do what they do so I'm excited to kind of learn more about that relationship which speaking of relationship we're seeing one end in front of us right now in a certain extent as we see Ryan isn't happy to learn the news that Billy will no longer be seeing him Billy is cutting deep at this point he tells Ryan that hey maybe I don't want to be around you because what you did to Becca Ooh, that was not a good line because we see him rip off that necklace, throws it on the ground, looks him in the eye, and we see also, speaking of the eyes, his eyes are glowing because he's upset. He doesn't hurt Billy, at least for now, and he tells him he hates him. I don't know, ladies and gentlemen, we might have just seen the origins of a dark Ryan going down this dark path, and maybe he's going to be seeking some type of mentorship or seeking his father in future episodes. Let me know if this was a good idea for Billy to say that to Ryan. I don't think so. I think it's going to bite him in his ass a little bit later. Let's have those discussions in the comments. Let's check back in with what's going on with Frenchie and Nina as she is looking for Cherry. And we get a little bit more of that backstory I was talking about because she mentions to Frenchie, you're always a follower. First, it was your father, which I'm excited to see what that means in their relationship. Then he went from Nina. Then he went to Butcher. So very intrigued to learn more about Frenchie, one of my favorite characters characters as well as in the show but we see Frenchie inevitably gets his way out of the situation by using his status with the government but we're going to talk about Nina because we're going to be going on the field trip to Russia by the end of this episode but this celebration with Homelander in the deep of course Homelander pulls a dickish move as he has seafood as the main course is Ashley and we see that the deep's wife is devouring this food and of course we see Homelander having full control just living in it talking about he compares himself to martin luther king jr because they fought the good fight and they took control like what are you even talking about homelander but it's in this moment that or i should say he says he's free at last so that was his comparison because that is you know a famous speech by martin luther king jr but we see the surprise chef specialty is on the entree for our boy the deep and it is the same octopus timothy that he shared a, a three-way with earlier in the episode as we see his wife texts him if you want to get back in the in the seven you got to do this he ultimately eats timothy and uh, homelander again he's just doing whatever whatever he wants to do with these characters but back into the home base with the boys this is where billy puts two and two together and he says you know what we're going to use that nina uh, card right now because she has ties to russia we know that the government the russia government took uh soldier boy so we're gonna have a field trip to russia and i can't wait to see our crew this again this season is so much bigger than the other seasons so far so are you all excited for this field trip i think we're gonna finally get uh soldier boy in the main timeline hopefully by next week let me know your theories on all that but let's wrap up the episode as supersonic he has decided to join the seven but he's doing this not just for his own deeds but because he wants to make sure that Starlight is safe. And I'm telling y'all, this uh, Starlight Huey thing might not work out because right now, su Supersonic, he's looking like a bit of a hero. You know, he's putting himself in the line of fire to protect Annie. We'll see how long this is going to go. But wrapping up the episode, we see Billy and Huey having a bit of a heart-to-heart. -heart, but this is kind of broken up because we see that Billy throws up in his face the after effects of the V24. I wonder if this is going to be a conversation next week where we're going to see Huey's going to learn why he threw up in the v24 that he took and i wonder if that's going to be the moment where again we know that huey has been embracing his billy side will he say give me that v24 and let's go to russia and give it to the rest of the boys i can't wait to find out but getting back into our final scenes homelander and starlight introduce supersonic into the group in front of the audience of american hero we also see them reintroduce the deep in the group and there is yet another surprise of homelander's uh, uh, sleeve as he tells the rest of the world hashtag home light as homelander and starlight are america's new power couple and we see starlight is even she's in it to win it you got to do whatever it takes she kisses homelander in front of everyone i wonder if, if uh how if uh you know our boy huey was watching that how he feels about this but remember that line that i told you all at the beginning of the episode uh when we saw her not taking control remember pain is weakness leaving the body and remember annie 
Keep that smile on. I love how we tie that back to the beginning of the episode. Speaking of the episode, this was the, and again, I really enjoyed the premiere. I loved episode two. This is the best out of the three so far. This three, these three episodes so far is on par with being the best season of the show, which I am so excited to see what the rest of the season has up its sleeve. But before we wrap up this review, I will say learning the origins of Payback in Action and Noir was fantastic. Ryan going down this dark path of hatred. Will he seek his father? And again, Starlight, Huey, their relationship isn't in trouble. Can't wait to find out. I'm going to give this a 10 out of 10. This episode was so great, and I'm so excited to see what they have for episode four. Thank you all for watching my breakdown, if you did, for episode one. If you haven't, check it out. Check out my breakdown for episode two. And, of course, thank you all for watching this review. I will be back every single week. Soon as the episode ends, come back to the channel, and let's break it down as a community together. Thank you all once again for watching this breakdown. Before you leave, make sure, if you haven't already, to like, share, leave your thoughts, theories, predictions in the comments. Which was your favorite? favorite episode out of the three that we got with this new season and what do you all hope to see in the rest of this season let's talk about that in the comments thank you again hope you're staying safe as you can see on the screen now come and join the community check out my previous reviews for the boys check out my most recent review and we'll catch you all on the next breakdown